Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Creative Architects by Castos. I am your host, Angela Hollowell, and this is a show about the future of podcasting. I am gathered here today. Oh, God, we're not in church. <laughs> um, I am joined today by Deidre Shin, the founder or one of the co-founders of Cap Show. We want to invest in things that we know will actually force us to level up. And so I say this all the time, like a Capshovian is someone who has invested in themselves and they are leveling up to that rather than falling to what's comfortable to them. This podcast is brought to you by Castos. One of the best ways to learn something is to go directly to the top people in that field. At Castos, we do just that. Each episode of Creative Architects features creators who have taken their work to the next level. We hope that by watching and listening, it will inspire more creativity in your work. Along the way, Castos wants to be a part of your creative journey. From our suite of tools, feature-rich hosting platform, and even our production services, we're here to help. Connect directly with us by emailing hello at castos.com or by clicking on the link in the description. Thanks for tuning in. It means a lot. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you so much, Deidre, for being here with me today. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for having me. And I feel like I was like, wow, are we getting married, Angela? This is, th things are moving fast. <laughs> but you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> you know, listen, the summer heat just makes you move a little bit hasty these days. That's, I just felt like I was calling in the congregation there. <laughs> we can all whip out our church fans real quick for this episode. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, anyways, for people who are watching or are viewing this and, um, you know, it's their first time being introduced to Deidre. First of all, Cap Show is an incredible company that's doing something that I feel like is really going to positively add to the podcasting community. Um, so Cap Show is um, kind of an AI-based writing uh, automation platform. Uh, Deidre, can you tell me a little bit about, like, you know, how you came up with the concept for Capture. Yeah. So I'll try to give you the, the short version, <laughs> um, but essentially uh, I've been in entrepreneurship for over a decade now. Um, and one of my latest, so three years ago, so, you know, started in hospitality, um, went into fashion technology, fell into agency work for e-commerce businesses, and then transitioned into coaching. That was, you know, around when COVID hit. And with that transition into coaching, um, one of my mentors at the time said that I had to start a podcast. And I had no idea how to do that, but I did because I'm <laughs> very coachable. So I was like, okay, well, if you're going to tell me to start a pod podcast, I'll do it. And I literally had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to do any of the podcasting things that it's just so simple and almost second nature now, especially with all the tools out there. Um, but at the time, so I'd started this podcast, but I it was just not doing anything. It wasn't growing. Um, the whole purpose was for it to help me grow my business, but it was not doing any of that, obviously. And so I had to figure out what was missing. What was I not doing? And when I figured out that what I wasn't doing was actually marketing the thing, you know, it was kind of like, you know, we, a lot of us fall into those traps because I definitely did of, you know, build it and they will come. I built this podcast and I was like, well, surely people will just find it, right? That's the, po that's the point. That's the purpose of a podcast, but it's not. And so I had to figure out a way to actually get eyeballs or earbuds to my podcast. And so it was through that, figuring that out, where I was like, oh my gosh, this really sucks actually. <laughs> you know, it's not great having to create all of this content when I was already creating content, which was my podcast. But then on top of that, I was like doing social media posts. I was doing blog posts. I was, you know, had, uh, trying to get it onto YouTube. You know, all of, I was trying to do all of the things and it was so overwhelming to the point where um, my team was burning out. I had someone leave because she was just like, I can't like, it's just, this is just too much. Um, and that was what led me to, to thinking, okay, we have to solve for this problem. How do we make the marketing of our anchor content, in this case, a podcast, that much simpler and quicker and more seamless? That's how Capture came about. Yeah. I mean, like you pretty much hit the nail on the head for probably 80% of podcasters who start a podcast. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is great. I have a mic. I have, you know, a nice pair of headphones. I've uploaded it. 
where is all my money? Like, <laughs> yes, exactly. I know. And that does, I wish it worked that way, but then we'd all be, and we'd all be rich, but it doesn't. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the journey that I went on. Yes. But to your point, I feel like your journey is fairly quick because if you started a podcast in 2020 and here it is 2023 and you already have an AI writing business that's specifically kind of aimed at podcasters, I'm sure other people can use it, but it is mostly aimed at podcasters. That's a very, very quick trajectory to solving your own problem, right? And I feel like to the podcasting community's credit, they get a lot of tech a lot faster than other types of creators. Um, Like, for example, YouTubers, you know, we've had average people hit a million subscribers on YouTube, like not famous people. But when you look at podcasters, the only people who are really big are people like, or not the only people, but the majority of people who are really big they were big before they ever started a podcast, right? So it's almost like they brought in an existing audience and then through this kind of intimate look into how they think, how they feel, the people they want to talk to, the people they're inspired by, they grew even more, right? But there's that zero to a thousand for a person who doesn't have an existing audience is a lot, a lot harder, but it's getting so much easier with all these tools, right? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think, and hopefully part of it is also, um, you know, the, the likes of the conversation that we're having, which is educating podcasters on the fact that they do have to actually put time and effort into promoting it. Because I think that was the missing piece that, you know, when I talk to even YouTubers, yes, they are helped by the fact that it's very much a search-based platform and there's, you know, and yes, podcasting apps can be, but it's just, it's a very different type of search. It's very different, um, you know, outcomes or results that you're getting from the mediums. Um, but even when I talk to YouTubers, it's like they also need to promote their video or, you know, whatever it is out there. So it's not like it's any different um, based on the medium. We still always have to promote the thing that we're putting out there. Um, But for some reason, that piece has just become lost (laughs) almost in, you know, in the wash. And we just assume that for some reason, just by having something on iTunes, like having a podcast on, on iTunes, it means that everything else is done for us. And that's not at all what it means. And so hopefully having these kinds of conversations just keeps educating and highlighting to other podcasters that actually there's a lot more that needs to be done for you to have a successful podcast. To your point about people kind of forgetting that when they create things, they have to market it and they have to put it out there. Um, I think that is true for any business. And I think that's where the confusion starts, you know, because they are not looking at, you know, a podcast or a YouTube channel as a business probably out of the gate, especially if they're doing it for, you know, just the love of creating, you know, because I think even your story is a little bit different. You didn't do it because you just love podcasting. You did it because you thought it would help your business, right? And so and so you kind of understood that this needs to have an ROI kind of early on, which maybe other people aren't necessarily thinking about. Yeah. And that's where a lot of, you know, we talk about this pod fade phenomenon that's, you know, that's really big these days because, um, and that basically means that on average, oh gosh, I think the majority of people are stopping their podcasts after just seven episodes. And when you think about why that's happening, it's because of this. It's because everyone has these unrealistic expectations that by having a podcast, they're going to become rich and famous. It doesn't happen within the first seven episodes. (laughs) And it's like, well, why am I doing this? Why am I spending all this time and effort into recording and editing and publishing when it's not actually getting me anything? And that is the big, that's, that in my mind is the big gap in terms of why it is that people are stopping their podcast, which is a big shame um, because we all have amazing things that we need to say and that we need to get out there. Um, and it's a shame when, you know, people stop because their expectations aren't aligned to reality. So that brought, brings up two questions for me, which I think you're the perfect person to answer. Um, the first of which being, you know, if we were to flip this on the positive, like what kind of positive stories have you heard from Capshow users, you know, since they've been using the product? 
Oh my gosh, so many. Um, yes, thank you for asking me that. So, you know, even for, and I'll start um, with my my own, like why we even designed Capture the way that we did was when I figured out actually how to effectively market my podcast and almost in which mediums and, and in what ways, like I was able to, I ended up doing multiple six figures in my coaching business in that first year that I was podcasting. So that was when I was like, oh, okay, this works. And that's kind of what we bottled up and put inside Capture. Um, and then since then, it's been amazing. So depending on people's results, but for example, just last week, we had someone, and this is totally random. Like it, It's crazy what opportunities come up when you're not even thinking about it or looking at it. But um, Kara, she has um, like a, a more of a wellness meditation style podcast. And she started using, um, well, she has been using our the blog post feature inside of Capture. And she mentioned just last week that she has her first sponsor for her blog post, which is, you wouldn't even have thought because it's, you know, again, it stems from her podcast and we always think about how we use our podcast to monetize. Um, but this was a very left field where she's like, yeah, someone just reached out to her, was like, love what you, you're you doing with the blog post. Can I sponsor that? Um, so that was amazing. We've had people who... Um, J.R. Sparrow. So he was saying that he, since he used Capture, his listeners went from like single or maybe at best double digits to now he, on one episode, he had over 22,000 downloads just because he started using Capture, like the title description. So for its discoverability, but also in the way that he uses um, social media um, was a little bit novel. Anyway, so we did a whole separate podcast episode on that because that was so fascinating. Um, you know, I've had other people who have their email list um, has grown, you know, hundreds of percent. Their open rates on their emails, because we also do do emails as part of Capture, um, has inc- like open rates... For um, Adam Lamb, for example, went from, I think he, he was averaging something like 23%. And since using Capture, that has gone up to about 66%, um, which also is incredible. Um, uh, Jerry uh, Dugan, he is now in the top 1% of in, on, on listen notes of podcasters. Same with Sandy. Um, she also mentioned she's now in the top 1% ever since using Capture because it's made them more consistent. It's made them... Um, sorry, more consistent in just podcasting, number one, but way more consistent in actually promoting it, uh, which is the key piece. And when you can be consistent in releasing episodes, you actually have more content that can get in front of your listeners in, you know, more frequently. And you're more consistent, therefore, at the back of that on marketing it, which means that you're actually getting more eyeballs and earbuds to it's just an, it becomes a, one of those, like a, just an avalanche almost. Like it's, a, it's, you just can't stop this thing because it takes off and it has its life, it has a life of its own, which is a great, like it's a, in a positive way. That's what you want. And that's what Capture Aviants are seeing across the board. Uh, so yeah, so really, really cool things happening. Yeah, I love that. But you know what I'm thinking, you know, about like, how do we get to that good to great, right? Because that's what it sounds like, you know, Capture is doing. Because I think even with the best marketing in the world, if it's not a good show, people aren't going to really stick around. So, you know, Capture and services like that take it from good to great, but it has to get to good. And good takes some investment. And I think, you know, a lot of people, when especially when they're first starting out, may not have the capital or may not just be as willing to invest in a paid tool or paid software to help get them from beginning to good, right? Um, So what are your thoughts on investing in a show early on, right? Because you can't buy the whole gamut, you know, unless you're Joe Rogan, you know, (laughs) unless you just (laughs) have an endless budget already, you know, what are your thoughts on that? (laughs) Yeah. um, So I think it really depends on what your, the outcome is uh, for the show. Some people have just a hobby show and that's totally cool. Like if this is just something that you just are passionate about and you just want to talk about it because really it's for you, <laughs> then maybe you don't need to invest as much into it because it, as long as you know, it is just for me and I'm just going to, I'm just going to put the time and effort in because I love this thing. I just love talking about it. And I love the fact that it's out there. Maybe it's not going to get a lot of downloads or listens and that's okay. I, that's just, you know, so that's one outcome and that's totally, totally cool outcome. Um, you know, we always say a lot of times like you have to do X, Y, Z, but if that's all you want, like you don't have to be doing any of these things, but if you have a very strategic, um, like, you know, exactly what your, your, you, 
you want out of the podcast. And by the way, Cap Show works the best for um, for experts who for entrepreneurs who are experts. So we're talking coaches, consultants, service providers, people who want to um, share stories and success stories, but also want to teach in some way. That's really who what you know, Cap Show is like, it just really supercharges that. Um, and and that works well because a lot of times the ROI is, yep, I have a business of some sort. I have a coaching business or a course or a, a consult, a, some sort of service that I'm providing off the back of that. And so the ROI that you're looking at there is, am I, is, am I able to market um, my content and it could be a podcast that eventually you want people to come to because you have some kind of funnel from there. Or it could just be, hey, I'm just going to use the podcast as the, literally as the anchor content. It doesn't matter how other people, you know, find me or whatever. As long as they find me in some way, go into my funnel, it could be through social media, it could be through a blog post, it could be through email, whatever that is. Then, you know, the, if, if you have that kind of frame to be like, yep, yeah, this is how I'm going to use, use, it becomes a very different conversation, right? Like it's not about now okay, well, the podcast itself has to make money. It's like, actually, my business has to make money. And the tools and the podcast and everything else that I'm investing in is just supporting that. Um, And if we can be really clear on what that outcome is and what ROI looks like, then it becomes a no-brainer. And now this gets into the second part of it, which is like, well, and I know this, my cap show is not the cheapest out there and is designed not to be because it is incredibly powerful for what it like for what we promise. Um, It was built by marketers. We're we're marketers at the end of the day. And we have built into it, um, you know, SEO and discoverability, uh, you know, uh, tips and tricks and hacks, you know, we've built into it things visibility from a visibility perspective around social media and stuff like that's all in built into Capture. Um, And so a lot of times the conversations that I'm having and the, how I think about it is like, we want to be only when we're com- only when our mindset's in the right spot, like, but we want to invest in things that we know will actually force us to level up. And so I say this all the time, like a Capshovian is someone who has invested in themselves and they are leveling up to that rather than falling to what's comfortable to them. And I, this was a, big shift for me too, because I invest in a lot of expensive, like, you know, we're on one of the top tiers of the, uh, you know, CRMs like HubSpot, you know, we don't now like, so when you think, and that's like thousands of dollars, right. And for me as a business owner, I'm like, I don't feel like I'm ready to invest in something like that. But once I did, it forced me to actually level up to, okay, well, I'm going to make the most of this investment. So what are all the things? And it's created new, like, new ways of thinking for us, new ways of opening up monetization opportunities, just because we leveled up to what it is that a tool like that could provide us rather than going like, okay, well, we're comfortable with spending maybe a couple hundred dollars a month. But what happens with that is then you don't actually pay attention to it, right? Because you're not actually leveling out, you're not stretching yourself into that. So that's like, it. I know it sounds a little bit more woo-woo maybe, but like I so, so believe in the whole like you need to invest in your future self because that's the only way that you're going to be able to actually grow and stretch into what you need to become in order to make the most out of that investment. First of all, I feel like I should call myself a Capshovian now. Let's just start there. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Because I 100% agree with everything you're saying, right? I think like... You know, for me in general, I was really hesitant to invest in any kind of SaaS tool because I was like, oh, I could just find a person to do this, right? But the way that I had to start looking at it, for better or for worse, is there a person on this planet that I could pay a couple hundred dollars a year to do this one task? Absolutely not, right? You know, and to do it this quickly and to do it without me thinking about it you know, like that is, that is the, the trade-off that you have to think about, right? How do I want to invest in order to get something done that is going to move my business forward exponentially? Because when you put it in that perspective, for whatever, whatever cap show cost, it's minuscule compared to what, (laughs) it's so small compared to what you're going to get out of it. Right. And I think that that kind of gets to be the rub. And again, you can't just invest in every software tool ever invented, but there are some that, you know, for a fact, are going to move your business forward and some that are worth 
the risk of paying maybe more than what makes you feel quote unquote comfortable at the time, like your CRM software, um, like hundred percent agree. Right. Um, for people who want to, or are in your shoes right now, and they're like, I have a problem as a creator and I want to solve it by building my own software tool. If you are starting over, what mistakes would you help that person make or like avoid? <laughs> avoid <laughs> like, yeah. Don't help, don't, don't don't help to make mistakes. To make those mistakes yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. So the very, very first, like, it's really funny. Uh, the very first iteration of Cap Show was actually not what we see now. And it wasn't even um, targeted podcasters. So I'll, I'll kind of tell you, I'll, I'll delve a little bit into the story. So um, I, I mentioned that I was coaching e-commerce businesses at the time. So had digital marketing agency transition that into coaching, but it was for e-commerce business owners. And um, my one fundamental like um, strategy or part of the strategy was to to these business owners was that you have to show up as yourself in on like in your marketing essentially and because if you know anything about e-commerce people like they don't want to do they there's a reason why they went into product right they they want to hide behind their product and I was like no you have to be the face of it because especially when you're just starting you're the only differentiator um, between you and anything else on like Amazon for example um, it's you and so then the, you know so there was a little bit of 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 you know, getting over that barrier. And then they were like, okay, okay, I get a Deidre. So, but I just, I don't know how, I don't know how to tell my stories. I don't know all of that. So what we actually did, the first iteration of Cap Show was actually um, quite rules-based. It wasn't even AI driven. It was, it was much more, um, uh, uh, much more rudimentary than that. And uh, basically we would, cap- the first iteration of Cap Show would t- take them through telling the story. So it was almost like um, we had an initial use at the time, say it was kind of like Mad Libs, um, where, you know, we would prompt them through telling a story. And then our software would take that and convert that into a bank of social media captions and emails. And um, that uh, did not take off. It, it was like crickets. And I was like, what is going on? Because this is amazing. There's like no one else is, you know, this is at the end of 2020 one, right? So before, you know, AI was, I mean, AI has always been a thing. It's always been around, but like before it was like big, like it is now, you know, there was, there weren't really tools, um, many tools out there kind of like this. And so I was talking to another coach at the time and I was like, you know, maybe it's just our headline. Maybe it's just the messaging of this. And he basically um, broke our balls around the fact that it was not that. (laughs) It was that we were not um, niche down enough. We were not talking to a specific audience um, because we were like, well, this can help all entrepreneurs. So when he was like, oh, but when you say all entrepreneurs, like what type? I was like, no, like all entrepreneurs can. <laughs> I was like, no, that's not good enough. And so um, it was only then when, and he and he was very um, specific about like, you maybe don't want to be talking to e-commerce because again, you have this, I've been through a bit of pain and it takes time to get people over that curve of, you know, believing that they need to be the face and they need to be telling a story. So he was like, are they the right audience or do you want to be talking to an audience who already knows the power of storytelling? And so when he put it that way, I was like, oh, okay, it makes sense now. Um, Everything that I've been doing with my podcast, it's kind of fallen into place. I just, I was almost just like kind of, you know, blinded. and, and so when I was like, yeah, I mean, I'm a podcaster and podcasters are natural storytellers. I don't, you know, there's none of that that I have to get over. That was when the second iteration of Cap Show, it, you know, we were set down this path. Um, so that's one of the first, you know, mistakes I would ha- help people avoid, which is get really targeted with who it is that you want to be speaking to. And we all know because I had this, you know, um, I had this limiting belief, self-limiting belief as well, which was like, but I want to build for everyone because I want to be this billion dollar company like, you know, uh, Meta or Google or whatever. But yeah, I think we all have to understand that they all started in one place as well. Like Facebook was just for college students, you know, like every every big business that we see now was very, very niche to begin with. Um, and I think we forget that because we look at these big businesses and we're like, well, they're targeting everyone. I want to target everyone. And so that's like fundamentally the first thing that I would encourage anyone starting a business to do, which is really, really know who the specific audience is that you are talking to, even if knowing that at some stage it's going to be a lot bigger than that. 
No, that's beautiful. I think that's like so, so important. Um, and I also think it's interesting that it didn't start as an AI based um, platform, which a lot of things are now adding some aspect of, of AI. And in my head, you know, I'm like, AI has been around. We just maybe haven't called it that, right? Yeah. Like the same things that, you know, we're looking for it to do now. It has in large part always been able to do. It just maybe wasn't in one main source thing that is, you know, chat GPT or something like that. But as a creator, you know, not only am I a podcaster, I'm also a filmmaker. I'm also a photographer. And in, you know, the communities that I'm in on Twitter, on Instagram, on threads, I think there's a lot of pushback in using AI for creative purposes, right? I think there are people who are like, AI is supposed to be for repetitive tasks. It's not supposed to be for, you know, critical thinking and critical creativity and and deep work and and things like that. Um, Have you kind of heard some of the pushback and people not wanting to use AI for writing social posts or for writing blog posts or, and, you know, what has kind of been your, you know, response to some of those negative, negative thoughts? Yeah. And look, like I have the same thoughts myself too. And so, and this actually comes in, um, plays into how we actually designed Capture. So um, Capture 1.0 of the second iteration, so for podcasters, but it was like, we went live in July 15th, on July 15th, 2022. So year, like just a little over a year ago. Um, and when we went live, it was kind of, it was relatively simple. I mean, as all tools when, you know, when they get launched um, are. And we actually then updated. So when ChatGPT, you know, really became big, we, I could see what was going to happen, which was all of these concerns of like, well, we're all going to start sounding the same. Um, you know, where does creativity play a part in in any of this? Um you know, how do I, how do I also, even just from like an intellectual property copyright perspective, like how do I start to protect myself against potentially what is, is coming? Um, and also how do I, and for, from a business perspective, I was like, from a capture perspective, I was like, well, I don't really want to be adding to the, what I call the content vomit that is going to come as a result of how um, pervasive AI is now. And so we actually worked and launched on Capture 2.0 at the beginning of this year. So we launched that, oh gosh, I want to say like February-ish um, of 2023. And 2.0 was all around how do we make the creator the center um, and AI just augments in certain ways. So now what does that mean? So I'm a big believer that if you if you think about podcasting and there's a particular flow um, in of in the podcasting process, right? So you kind of you come up with the the topic idea, um, and then you record and and publish, and then you market it. And so for me, those t- those two things, like coming up with the idea, yes, you could use ChatGPT potentially to just spark an inspiration, right? You could use AI in that way. Um, but I draw the line at scripting, at having an AI script something um, because at the end of the day, I fully believe in creators as a whole. We need like it, any any of the content that we produce needs to be anchored in our stories, needs to be anchored in our experiences and in the actual value, like our perspectives, our thoughts. Um, so when we talk about, you know, like a, a framework or something like that has to be us, that, sh- that cannot be generated through AI. So I am a firm believer in that. And I talk about that on like everywhere that I can, I'll be like, do not use AI for that. And the second part about recording, and I know more and more that there are people out there who are creating podcasts that are fully AI, even, you know, voiced. And I also draw the line there because I'm like in the same, like, why are we doing this thing? Like, why are we even creators? At the end of the day, we're creators because we want to connect with our audience. So that's why, you know, the first part Connect, like telling your stories, showing the value, that is a surefire way that you can connect with your audience. But then the other way that is, gets forgotten a lot of times, I think, is that we connect with our audience because of our voice and our accent and the way that we look and we show up and the energy that we bring. And, you know, yes, AI will become smarter. And I know that I will eat these words at some point, but AI cannot replicate that right now. Um, you know, the way that I stumble over my my words sometimes or I stop mid-thought and I can't finish it because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you this other thought. That is a humanness, right? That 
we all understand that that connects and some people won't like that. And that's fine as well. But there are other people who are like, I just love how, you know, how just imperfect you are. And, you know, because I can vibe with that. And that's what actually, you know, that bit, you know, the modulations of our voice and our tone and all, like that's the stuff that actually also subconsciously connects with our audience. And so those two parts, I'm like, I will not in like, gosh, I feel like I should say never say never, but like, I don't think I will ever use AI for that. But then when we go into post that, um, creating that content, the way that we created capture and why, um, and I, why I feel as good about it and I stand behind it is because it is still anchored in your content. In your, if you've done the first two things, which is you've told your stories or your guest stories, maybe you've taught, you've given your value or your guest value, that the things that it amplifies of the back of that, that capture does is completely anchored in your content. Um, and it's just, it's just finding other ways to, you know, to like, it picks up on particular things that you might've even forgotten that you mentioned in that, in that episode. And it, it draws that out and then it amplifies that. Um, and so that's the way that we built capture, you know, and, and, you know, everything else that we, we put into that, which is that you can now structure your assets in different ways. So you can actually create, so the way that I do my, um, my email or I structure my blog post or I structure my, you know, um, title and description or show notes will be different to how you do it, Angela, for example. Like it's because that's the way that we've designed capture is that it's completely, um, customizable. So we control, we, we, as the creator, we control it. I'm just not going to give you a slab of text like you get sometimes out of, you know, other AI tools and you just copy and then everyone looks the same. Everyone's look, looks the same. No, it's like you have the control, you customize it. And by the way, it's a full editor. So rather than just copying and pasting, edit, edit the thing. That's the only way that, you know, and we're very, very <laughs> open about this to all of our capture audience. It's like, if you are not editing, your your content, like you've got to start doing it um, because if, when we think about what's coming around regulation about protecting yourself through copyright and all those things, the more that the human ha- plays a hand directly in that, the more that you're protected. So, so we built an you know an inbuilt editor and everything. Yeah. Anyway, so all of all that to say that you know we are very much um, very very passionate about create about creating an, an atmosphere where the creator itself doesn't feel like their voice is not heard. That's the most important part of it. The AI is just there to help amplify that. I love that. I love that. I think that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Deidre. And I cannot wait for more people to try Cap Show for their podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Angela. That's all for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give us a five-star review on your listening app. Like this video if you're tuning in on YouTube and subscribe for more episodes. In the next episode of Creative Architects by Castos, I'll be talking with Justin Moore of Creator Wizard, and you won't want to miss it. I'll catch you in the next episode.